How do you know your team absolutely sucks? Bars! Football! Well, let's take a look at some of the metrics, shall we? Hey, yuck, yuck, gosh! When your quarterback has more turnovers than the opposing quarterback has passing touchdown, and that opposing quarterback is the GOAT Tom Brady, and he has four passing touchdowns, what do you got? Bars! Football! When you have a number one wide receiver who has two catches for 16 yards on a whopping four targets, what do you have? Bars! Football! When you have a number two wide receiver that was hyped up to be a breakout candidate in year two, and he ends up with two catches for 39 yards and a pick going off of his hands, what do you got? Bars! Football! When the only thing you could do offensively or anything all day is have somebody run for a hundred yards because of course that's the only thing the Bears fucking know about the game of football anymore is the running game and defense. You got Bears football to come out and immediately give up the ball, give up a big punt return and then a couple of plays later give up an easy no objections, no resistance provided touchdown to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bars football! When you give up 21 points in the first quarter. Bars football! When you're down 35 to 3 at halftime. Bars football! When it's so bad that the commentators and Jim Nance and Tony Romo have completely phoned it in and did so very damn early to the point where they're trolling everybody saying, oh, no, the Bucks are going to maybe regret passing on that field goal when they're up 35-3. to Bears football! When you're so bad that the Bucks are missing two of their key weapons on offense in the passing game and Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Brown and you combine to look at the other two and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, you say, hey, we want to send the Tampa fans home happy. Let's make sure Chris Evans goes for, or Mike Evans goes for three touchdowns and Chris Godwin gets a touchdown catch himself. Bars! Football! When you're so bad that you can't even score in garbage time. Bars! Football! When you lose by a score of 35-3 to a week after a double-digit loss to your hated division rival, the Green Bay Packers, when you're now 3-4 and four for the season, when you look like a complete clusterfuck heading in the wrong damn direction, what do you got? Bars! Football! And I know you're looking at this and saying to yourself, you're trying to fight the urge, but you, you know it. You say... You know, if this keeps up, I'm going to be calling them Bustin' Fields sooner rather than later. And yes, you will. And do you know why? Bars! Football! Imagine being one of those fans still trying to defend Ryan Pace. Like, we could clown school shit this Matt Nagy, noontime Nagy, numbskull Nagy bullshit until we're blue in the frickin' faces here. Oh, he's such a good leader. Good leaders don't lose like this, 35-3. to three. This is the worst loss during the Nagy era. How the fuck is that being a good leader? They're 3-3 three and three going up against the defending Super Bowl champions, and this is how ready he had him to play? But he's a good leader? Oh, <laughs> let me guess. He's going to have to sit there and ask the whys. Figure out the whys. Let me guess, Justin Fields had a really good week of practice. Just like Mitchell Trubisky always used to have a really good week of practice. Bars football! Thank God there's so much great communication and collaboration between the front office and the coaching staff and the team. Bars football! Because if we didn't have that, what the hell would we have? Oh, that's right. A shit-ass team that's going nowhere. That was embarrassing. That's what I get for even trying to be a little positive, even giving a little bit of a benefit doubt. 
Yeah, in no way did I think the Bears were going to win this game. You had to be fucking insane to think that. But I thought there was a chance they could at least have covered what was at the time a 12 and a half point spread. I mean, they did beat the Bucks last year. That's how bad it is. The Bucks have a bunch of backups in the secondary without two key cogs in their offensive pass catching skill set group. And they beat the Bears 35 to 3, the same basic structural Bears that beat them last year on Thursday night. Remember this? Remember this? Yeah, Tom Brady. All he was doing was seeing into the future. He was saying, next year, bitches, I'm going to have four touchdown passes on you. I'm going to make history. Thank you, Chicago, for helping me send all the Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans home happy. Boy, did they. Fuck. I can't imagine watching this game, though, and just solely focusing your blame and your hatred on Matt Nagy. The hell is wrong with you? Who's the dumbass that hired him? Who's the dumbass that decided to retain him for 2021? Who's the dumbass that built this team? Who? Who? Who's the one that invested so much on the defensive side of the ball to have a just above league average defense? Who? Who's the idiot that saw this offensive line and said, yeah, hey, we're mostly good. We don't really need to invest in that or take it seriously, especially if we're going to sit there and draft a fucking rookie quarterback in round one. Who did that? Ryan Pace. Now, I don't care how much pretty boy Pace is able to stir the cobwebs of the Crypt Keeper Virginia's cunt. If you're making any defenses or any excuses for him right now, you are the fucking problem too. He must go and go now. Matt Nagy should be launched into the goddamn sun. Ryan Pace should be launched into goddamn Lake Michigan. And then who's the asshole that's overseen it all? Well, you can't fire the fucking McCaskies. Virginia won't die. Somebody tweeted earlier in the day during the game. Oh, well, apparently George Hallis is keeping her alive because he won't let her into heaven. I'm like, oh, finally, somebody decided to play defense. Speaking of that, when do you know your team sucks? is one of your highest played defensive players has a missing tackle tracker, Eddie Jackson. Bass football! You want some analysis of this game? Bass football! They scored three fucking points! And they gave up 35! They scored three points! And excuse me, I keep saying 35, because I forgot about the field goal in the fourth quarter. They gave up 38. It was 35 to 3 at damn halftime. The lack of adjustments to say, hey, it's not like we're trotting out there our fourth string right tackle. You know, we won't want to give him any type of help or anything. It's not like, hey, we've had problems with the edge rushers all year. So, you know, early on. When the Bucks bring a safety blitz, like we don't want to make sure that there's somebody else out there to rotate that blocking assignment. Why would we do that? Bears football. Oh, God. You know what's bad when you're thinking during the game. Yeah, you know, what if the Bears would have drafted Jalen Hurts instead of Cole Komet last year? And you're saying, well, Jalen Hurts isn't great. Well. Justin Fields is trending towards Bustin Fields right now. Way to go, Nagy and Pace! You own this! He was terrible. He's not progressing, he's regressing. And no, that doesn't mean you dumb dicks start Andy Dalton either. The shit wouldn't have been any better with him. But, if you look at it, you know, instead of taking the... Uh, tight end that can't really move and can't get separation and Cole Komet and those types of guys are dime a dozen. Like literally you look at other tight ends in the roster and you say, what's so, so fucking different about Cole Komet that he justified a second round pick? And I answer, of course, it's nothing. But the standard is so low in Chicago that as Bears fans look at him and they say, oh my God, he, last week he had more catches for 49 yards. We're going to do backflips. And this week, my God, on National Tight End Day, he had five catches for 43 yards. Backflips, baby, backflips. But if you didn't take a Jalen Hurts last year, you would have had still a young quarterback on a rookie scale contract and an even more affordable rookie scale contract as a second round pick. You would have had your 2021 first round pick that you could have then invested in the offensive line like you needed. 
And just as importantly, you would have had your 2022 first round pick that would have made this job a whole hell of a lot more appealing for whoever's going to be the next general manager and head coach to come in. Instead, they have none of that. They have a rookie quarterback that's not getting coached up, that's not getting schemed up for. He's going to bust very quickly if this shit doesn't change very quickly. Why would you want to keep Matt Nagy around? I don't fucking know. Stubbornness into the stupidity, I guess. I don't fucking know. But you don't have an offensive line to protect him. You don't have first or fourth round picks next year. Once again, Matt Nagy is one thing. What a surprise, his team in a primetime spot played small. That's why he's called Noontime Nagy. When you look at the lack of basic fundamental understanding of the situation and the opponent, the not helping provide more assistance to your fourth string right tackle in pass protection, like that's the numbskull shit that we're talking about. But he is not the only problem. Another week, another dumb dick penalty by somebody on the defense. Bilal Nichols wanting to get into the Wins and Miller action. But, oh, yeah, let's, let's say Des Sean Desai is doing a great bang-up job here. Fucking idiots. But if you're defending anybody involved with this Bears coaching staff or front office right now, you need your goddamn head examined. The wide receivers don't get separation. The offensive line can't pass protect to save their fucking lives. The defense has moments where they play all right, and they have moments where they absolutely suck, and then they have some back-breaking drive-extending penalties because they play like undisciplined morons. You have a general manager that has this team in a bad cap space without premium draft pick capital next year. Major questions still, of course, at the quarterback position. Questions on the offensive line. Oh, that's a real bang-up job right there. To be clear, this is not the worst I've ever seen the Bears. And anybody that's going to act like this is the case, no. And for those that are going to say, that 2014 Mark Tressman team, you're a fucking idiot. Or you're really young and you don't know any better. Like you didn't live through, let's say, 97 and 98 Wanstead years, trading a first-round pick for Rick Meyer type of crap. Like you want to talk about bad, that's bad. And that's not even the worst. Older fans in their 50s or 60s are going to point to the 70s and talk about the days of Bobby Douglas and Bob Avellini and Vince Evans as a quarterback and say, fuck you. Well, this is bad. This is really, really bad. And you can't just say fire everybody in tank because what are you tanking for? Because you don't have your first round pick. You're in the worst possible place with this team right now. You have no reason to really feel any emotion whatsoever. Like all, the only emotion you might have had today was laughter. Maybe you were angry, but are you really angry? If you are, it's only because you deluded yourself into thinking this team was much better than it actually was. <laughs> the Bears, who are I thought they were, and I'm not letting them off the hook. Oh, Denny Green, rest, rest in peace, sir. But this is bad. There should be a fire sale at the trade deadline, but you're not going to get that out of a coach and general manager out of the hot seat. For those saying that Matt Nagy should be fired tonight or tomorrow morning, okay, well, he's not the number one problem. So if he goes, everybody else associated in the chain of command that can be fired should be fired, and that means Ryan Pace and Ted Phillips. Why in the fuck would you let Ryan Pace, with his no playoff wins, have an ass in six plus seasons, who constructed this team, who hired this numbskull, why would you let him get yet another head coaching hire? Who the fuck does that? It's bad enough you let him get another quarterback decision in after the Trubisky decision. And then Ted Phillips. I mean, what more do I have to fucking say? Bars football! If you're somebody that's younger and your family has sucked you into this cesspool of shit, I've got a gentle piece of advice to you. Run away, find a new team while you can. Because it does not get any better. Focus on the Bulls, because that's what you got right now. Anybody wants to jump on your shit? I'm going to tell them, and I'll tell your family too. Fuck them. And you quote me on that. Fuck them. Because they clearly didn't love you if they made you a Bears fan. 
Because who the hell would do this to somebody that they love? Bears football!